Hugh Hefner, a true American icon, created an empire that was unrivaled. Although some of us bunnies may have gone rogue, it's because of the love and respect that we received from the man behind it all. Because after all, we did learn from the best. Relive the stories from the most prominent celebrity home in history. What happens in the grotto stays in the grotto. From those of us that lived it. The employees that worked it. And the guests who loved it. And the, the mayhem continues. <laughs> I'm Brian O'Leary. You're listening to Rogue Bunnies Mayhem, and I'm excited that we actually have in studio with us Liz Stewart, July 1984. 1984. Jen, Victoria, come on, we got Liz. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you and I got to run into each other uh, recently, just within the last couple. We did a, a fun little surprise birthday party for Pat Lacey. We did. And, and yes. I, I called you for some ideas, and you jumped in and really helped the party come together. So oh, thank it's, you. it's just fun to get the family back together. Let's I mean, we're always best. talking about that. Go, man, we're yeah. part of something so iconic. Yes. You know, so I'm just glad that we all get to get yeah. together, and especially for Pat Lacey, which we love, our bunny mom, bunny mom forever. Bunny mom forever. You know, forever. It's a, that was so special. And just to see her face light up and seeing how yeah. – how many came out? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was great. I'm sad I missed that. Girl, there was bunnies that showed up that worked at the club from way back, oh, way wow. before us. Jen. Yeah, and um, so it was interesting to talk to them because she was a bunny mother at the clubs before she was doing the playmate bunnies. Exactly. Yeah. It was As a matter of fact, I met Pat Lacey when I was 20. I went on a uh, casting call for bunnies at the Century City Club. I showed up early and I thought, okay, this is cool. No problem. I, I kind of got this. A couple of hours later, there were 500 women there. And I thought, why am I here? <laughs> this is so stupid. I don't have this. And they hired seven girls out of those 500. And wow. Was, and you were what? And I was one of them uh, chosen by Lisa. Wow. Yes. It was, it was amazing. I was 20. I was a kid. Aww. Um, and that was the beginning of my long, long relationship with, with Lacey. She's my second mom, I think. You know, it's cool when you hear these stories, right, ladies, that like, you know, you become a playmate, but then so many playmates have then integrated into the company. You know what I mean? I mean, the boss has been doing that since the beginning. Yeah. Actually, it was kind of a reversal. He used a lot of his secretaries and people that work for the offices yes. and made them centerfolds. Yes. But it was so cool. It's always so cool when you said, yeah, you know, I was a playmate. And the next thing you know, like Joyce Nazari, right? Working up in the offices, you know? And it's just like, wow. You know what I mean? It's just all these iconic playmates yeah. working for the company. And I think that's what keeps it as a family. That is exactly what keeps it as a family. And I don't know how many other companies have that habit of hiring women from within. When I started working at the club, I think it was around 1980 or so, I think Christy Hefner was still running stuff. And I was uh, so yeah. proud of that, that my boss was a woman. Luckily, Hef made the statement, which I love. It's one of my favorite statements. Once a playmate, always a playmate. I'm still love a that. playmate. No one can ever be July no. 84. No. Yeah. It's oh, only you. Right. Only me. You own that. I Yay. What does that feel? I mean, that's got, that's got to be awesome, right, that's ladies? Awesome. That's awesome. I mean, no matter cool. what you decide to do and go on to, you know, venture out into whatever career, you're yeah. always that playmate. Yeah, the only yeah. one. It's very, it's very surreal. And also, anytime a new um, platform or like social media thing comes out, you run to it so you can get your handle, so no one else like takes it from you. You know what I mean? Because that's yours. You don't want anyone else to like claim it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm proud always... to correct people who cast me as former playmate. It's like, no, oh yeah, no, no, no playmate. No. Yes, <laughs> I yes. love that. I've seen that. I've seen that where people will say, you know, to go former or past, and it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, obviously you're. Yeah, you don't it. get it. <laughs> 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 Let's live in the life of the playmate world. Okay, okay. so now you're 20 years old. You're cast into this whole another world, oh, right? Wow. What was it like for you? I, I, I mean, you're doing traveling, you're doing all these kinds of it things. It was crazy. I mean, I was 20 when she hired me, so I could only work lunch. I couldn't work at night until I was 21. Oh. And um, I was 20 and a half. So the, the first six months, I served lunch. We made 
amazing, excellent tips, and we put them in our cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> well, where else are you going to put them? <laughs> well, yeah, let's remember I'm wearing a bunny costume. And, right. <laughs> and it was so cool. When I started at Playboy Club, I was the one of the shyest girls you could ever know. Super shy. Really? Oh, gosh. See, I always find that fascinating. When, when, when any of you ladies say, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm super shy. You guys literally like posed nude for a mega magazine right. seen throughout but the I, world. But then I do know you ladies. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. there's definitely a tip When you put to that me. costume on, it's, it's like you transform into something. Your posture is forcibly like yes. taller and you just feel yes. powerful. You're in the tiniest little outfit, but there's so much power yeah. behind it. It's like a super suit. Even, yeah. yeah it is. I mean, super suit. And, <laughs> it's like a Wonder Woman suit. And you can be shy because people come up to you to engage with you. You don't have to approach people to have conversations. Yeah. So it really is like a. That's exactly it's like its it. own I, thing. I put the costume on and I transformed from this mm -hmm. shy, quiet girl that didn't know much about fashion or makeup or hairstyles. I was just out living. And I, I remember stating to my fellow bunnies, no, I'll never pose in a magazine. Never. <laughs> well, that went out the window two years later. <laughs> two years later, I quietly, I didn't tell my girls because I really didn't think I had a chance. I just had to do it. I went to an open casting at uh, Playboy on Sunset. And we didn't have cell phones back then. So on my way home, I get home. My boyfriend says, Marilyn Grabowski called. She wants you to come back right now. What? No, I'm not ready. I was just, you know, <laughs> playing around. Then I became a playmate. I mean, my life has been amazing through the eyes of Playboy and how much it helped it meaning playboy what about when you when you became a playmate did, were you having to stop working in the club as a bunny like you can't you couldn't do both how was that did they let you do both they let me do both and i did not want to oh. leave the club because i loved my girls i loved my bunnies and i didn't want to leave but uh have sent me on a united states tour the month that my my magazine came out. So I did end up taking a lot of time off of the club. I'd come back and it would be great. I think I lasted another year and a half at the club here and there because I was so busy with the magazine. You know, I got to travel all over the country. I got to travel all over the world. And boy, I never saw any of this coming. Never. What were some of the most fascinating places you got to travel to? Greece. Wow. I, yeah, Greece. Wow. I went with uh, Marianne Gravatt who I think is still probably the most beautiful Playmate ever. She was 1983 and Playmate of the Year, I think, in 1983. So we went to Greece. We went to Athens. We went to a few places there. I've been to lots of tropical islands. I, I forget at this point, and certainly all over the country. All on, hey, I'm going to try this. Didn't want to tell your friends. No. Next thing you know, boom, you're traveling the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. It was ultimately too much for my boyfriend. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was going to hit on that. Okay, so how did the relationship go? Yeah, so he didn't love the club. He didn't like the costume. I think he was probably a little insecure about the whole thing. I don't blame him. Uh, and then once I became playmate, it was way too much, and he broke up with me. I was devastated. Wow. He broke up with wow. me the day before the magazine hit the newsstand. Who breaks up with a playmate? Right? <laughs> I was going to say, talk about bragging rights, man. That's the ultimate bragging rights. Like, yeah. it's like, hey, my girlfriend, Miss July, 1984. What? I mean, you know, I mean, come on. He was sorry he later. He was bummed later. And by then it was too late. I was just. Psh. Oh, yeah. Over. Yeah. Done, dude. Yeah. Later, man. <laughs> yeah. Way too many good things going on. I can't go back. Well, we're going to want to delve into now you transforming from Playmate into working with the company. Oh, boy. I mean, we've got a lot of stories oh, here. Boy, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You and I have talked a lot yeah. off, off, off. I don't know what you say. Off camera, off mic. Off you mic. know, we've had some fun. So that's why I'm excited about this. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. You are listening to Rogue Bunnies Mayhem. The Rogue Bunnies have had some pretty epic in real life events that I'm sure you've all heard about. Wondering how you can be included in our next one? Become a VIP NFT holder. The main benefit of being a VIP is access to our events. You'll also have priority access to future drops, gated chat channels with the Rogue Bunnies, VIP-only online events, and more. Want more details? Visit roguebunnies.com. 
Then follow the bunny mask and get ready to go rogue. Welcome to the metaverse. Hi, I'm Audra Lynn, Miss October 2003, and one of your Series 1 and Gold Genesis bunnies with Rogue Bunnies. And you're listening to Rogue Bunnies Mayhem. <laughs> now, right when we were taking this break, you said you just had a flashback? I just had a flashback. Jen, I designed your set for your I know. playmate shoot. As a matter of fact, I have your photos. I have your centerfold at home. I have, oh, wow. Yeah. I'll have to send it to you. Yeah, I love that. Okay. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> Anything so, you so have. When you describe it, when you talk about the set, like you came up with the idea or Jen, did you have the idea and then you and worked with Liz together on it? Well, I just, I, I mean, I just showed up that day, but I had talked with Holly prior, you know, if, if this happens, what would your theme be? And I'm like, has to be rock and roll, has to be 80s metal, has to be like Sunset Strip, guitars, full music. And then yeah. I showed up and, and it was just perfect. It was just so meant to be the whole thing. So we fast forwarded quite a bit from me being a bunny and then a playmate. We just kind of jumped into my career at Playboy after I, I got married and, and then got divorced and, and did the family thing, I, I went back to Playboy. I had been selling real estate and doing interior design for quite a while. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I went back to my photographer, Arnie, and I called him. I'm like, Arnie, I know you guys build great sets. Most people don't know this. Most people don't get it that for a good amount of time, the centerfolds were shot on a set, on an elaborate set. And I said, Arnie, I want, that's where I want to go now. That's what I want to do. Can I come in and meet your art director, talk to people? Can you get me in? I'll do it for free. Before you knew it, I was heading the department. Wow. Yes. That's sick. I don't know how many sets I've done. Way too many to count. They're all on my website. And I have photos, of course, of everything at home. I have some memorabilia. Um, I did all, all the Playmate sets. I started in 2004. And I think I went through to 2017 before I segued into producing Playmate videos. Oh, gosh, that's a whole nother big thing. <laughs> yeah, that's another big, wonderful thing. Please, you need on. to write a book. Are you writing right. a book? I hope. <laughs> that's a good you idea. You should write a book. <laughs> Jen, that's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. And we'll you have lots that. of pictures, apparently. And and people love of, that. Yeah. Okay. I love this. So this, this is the future, <laughs> the future of what I'm going to do. We're talking about it right now. So yes, Arnie did bring me in and I did sets on stage. Uh, I did sets out in forests. I, I did sets in the studio. It was such a wonderful, wonderful experience. Playboy magazine at a certain point stopped, kind of segued out of building sets because it was very expensive. And so being budget conscious, uh, some of the top people at Playboy said, okay, we've got to start shooting on location versus building sets. Uh, that, but that would seem that would be more expensive, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I was going to say. Mean, you have to travel, all the costs of traveling, putting uh, playmates up in rooms and all the, the crew. Well, we kept the sets local to Los Angeles. The crew wasn't traveling. We were just going from home to the location. Maybe the playmate would travel wherever she was coming gotcha. from. Okay. We would ship her right, in. Right. And that was... It was a savings. Building sets was expensive. And a lot of the reason it was expensive is because Hef was very demanding on the details of the set. We would shoot us. This is before digital now, maybe 2011, 2010. We were still shooting the centerfold and somebody at the studio would run a physical print mm -hmm. up to the mansion, which was maybe, you know, 20 minutes away. And we would sit, the whole crew that worked on that set, including the <laughs> photographer, including Marilyn, we would sit on pins and needles waiting for Hef's notes. The playmate, too, because then if we didn't get it right, then we had to start all over. <laughs> A couple playmates didn't make it past that day, too. Yeah. No, oh, mine often. was. Whew. My legs were so sore from holding one pose all day. Right? Like the second day, I was like, I don't know if I can do yeah. this again it was it was rough and you have to hold completely still and you have mm -hmm. to pull your tummy in and your shoulders back i used to say come on girls tits to the sky pull it up <laughs> 
they they love that. They would make them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we started going on two locations, maybe a fabulous house or maybe a ranch, and, and I would bring decor down gotcha, gotcha. to to build the storyline. Hef was very, very detail oriented about the playmate's life, who she was, and how she was represented by her surroundings. And of course, he always wanted that element of a man. It could be the tiniest thing. It could be the watch way back on the top of the juke. Box. See, you answer my. I was just waiting to ask this, ask this question because I know at the beginning the the, the original centerfolds. I don't want to say original. I mean, but you know, at the start, he was always in a shadow. There was always like some kind of shadow, of like you know, a that man. would be in the back, or a man would be in the back, and there'd be a shadow. And I was just curious if that ever continued on because. I never thought about that till like right now, thinking about like sets. Did you have to put little things in? And you just answer that. Absolutely. It could it could be a whiskey off in the background. It could be a man's pajama top off on the floor in the background. And he was always very cognizant of what is the item and where is it? Is it lit? I want it to be lit. Oh, wow. And it needs to be subtle. And so that the viewer can look at the centerfold and study it, what's What's she wearing? Where's the hidden bunny? Where is the hidden, you know, elephant of a man in the room? They kept that going until I think about 2017 when the magazine just went digital. I think it's probably the only magazine that did that, right, ladies? Yeah. I mean, when I you mean, think about it, I mean, I can't think of like Sports Illustrated doing that or Cosmopolitan or any no. of those other, you know, magazines. Because Hef's idea was this, we're telling the story of this woman. It's a story. It's not just a photo. She's not just here naked. This woman is special and important because here's her story. I think that's probably what viewers, magazine readers loved was that it was the Playmate of the Month was a story. Not just a naked woman. I used to like reading the uh, the bios. Yeah. I thought the bios were always so Those cool. Those were cool. Because you really got to know this yeah. person a little bit deeper. Yeah. You know, how, how did those questions come up? Do, do you recall, ladies? I mean, like, did they give you we, we were given like a, a bunch set of questions. format? Or yeah. did you say, hey, I'd like to ask or have these questions asked of me? There was a bunch of questions and you would fill it out yourself, your own writing. And I think they cherry picked the ones they liked, if I remember. I did an interview on the phone with someone who asked me a bunch of questions and how I was discovered and all of those things. And then they put it into like the bio. I think I overshared though, because I mentioned where I was working at the time and they put it in the magazine. And then all of a sudden I had like randos coming to where I was working. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I can work here anymore. This is, <laughs> this is kind of creepy. Like yeah. I can't like walk to my car and people are like, whoa, you're in Playboy. I'm like, no, this isn't safe anymore. That's a major mistake. So. <laughs> Somebody blew that one. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, they made it very personal. So do you, do you ladies remember? Okay. You, you were just talking about Liz, about like how there would be some little hidden gem in the photo to represent a man in the room. Do you, do you guys recall what yours were? I think mine was, because uh, mine was like a New Year's Eve thing. I think mine had an extra champagne glass. I think I had two champagne glasses in mine, something like that. Yeah. I was thinking when she was talking that I'm going to have to look at mine again and see, because I don't know that I ever looked at it for that detail, because I was, mine was sort of like kneeling on a bed. So there has to be like something draped yeah, I'm gonna look. on the bed or maybe like a, a whiskey glass or something. Yeah. Of the rock well, that's and roll cool. Thing. It's like a whole nother game because I know yeah. when yeah. we would get the magazines at the mansion, all the butlers, we'd all take them all out. Right. And right away, let's see who can find the bunny first. Oh, right. You know, and you're always looking for the hidden bunny on the cover. On the cover. But I don't even think about this in the centerfold. Yeah. yeah. That is cool. Yeah. Such good times. I mean, uh, have created this creative artistic world where um, beautiful women could be acknowledged by the world and then also share their life story. This is what I do. I'm a veterinarian. I am a librarian. I'm a student. It's just a really exceptional idea. Well, I think that's what's cool also is that he really – introduce the idea of the girl next door yeah you know this is this could be your barista this could be like you're saying yes. your veterinarian this could be your 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 nurse whatever this could be your lawyer down the street yeah there is beauty all around you and and it's not just someone who's like in that modeling world we're going to take the girl next door and make her the model 
So Liz, I have a question for you because we were talking, obviously we were talking about how you worked on my set, but who, how did the conversation start once you got details about the playmate and what they might like? Like who created the conversation that ended up being the set design? Well, um, let me ask you by that time. I mean, you filled out your data sheet first. Is that correct? Did you do it that I way? Think yes. so. so we would get the data sheet and we would read what you wrote about yourself. Uh, what your interests are, what your goals are, where you've been, where you're going. And then the conversation would start with the entire team in, in a meeting, team meeting, the photographer, art director, myself, producer, whether it was Marilyn Grabowski or Stephanie was, I think, your producer, and the makeup artist and, and hairstylist and wardrobe so that we could all be cohesive on what we were going to create. So initially, I think it was the photographer's initiation of what he thought he could photograph really well and sexy that comes from what you wrote. And then we would jump in like, yeah, well, you know, I know of this uh, rock and roll uh, club. Maybe we could shoot her on this particular stage. It's in this particular city. And then somebody would say, okay, well, I'll call and find out if that club is available. And we would all throw in ideas on how to get you the set that, uh, reflected you, who you are, and would be accepted by Hef. So Liz, I want to go back to the Playboy Club. I had some questions for you about the club because I'm so intrigued. Of course, the clubs all closed before I came to Playboy. The last one was the one in Century City that you worked at. Just curious because it was right in the middle of the Hollywood scene, basically. So was what were some of the major celebrities that came in? Yes, I met lots of really cool people. I mean, did you have to be a member to get in or did anybody get into the club at that point? No, you had to be a member. You had to be a member. You had a key card. And um, we were surrounded in Century City by office buildings. So a lot of the men in the surrounding office buildings would come in for lunch. I met all kinds of people. I met Eddie Murphy. I met Steve Garvey. I uh, went on to become friends, you know, light friendships with them because they became regulars. I forget. Oh, Larry Flint and his wife. They were. A what? Bit Larry more. Flint? Yeah. He used to go to the clubs? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was this big old rival thing going on. No, he came in for lunch. Wow. With his wife, Althea. And boy, that was always messy. That was always. Oh, <laughs> we're not going to let, let that go away. What do you mean always oh, messy? Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> Uh, it's uh, just us. You can tell us. Althea was a wreck. She was a wreck. She would come in so wasted. They'd carry her in and practically put her on a gurney to get out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because she was wasted when she got there. Um, I'm still surprised that Larry was allowed to come into the club because I thought there was a big feud. Nope. He was a regular. What? He was a reg- I mean, I think that's cool to have, like, your competitor coming to your club for lunch. That that has... That says a lot, I feel like. It's kind like. of a power play, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, for we sure. Were, Hef wasn't going to his club to have lunch, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. 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 I forget at this point. I mean, it was the mid-80s, and like you said, we we're in the middle of Hollywood, and uh, we had all kinds of people come in, come in through there, day and night. All kinds of stars, celebs. People just wanted to see the bunnies. The bunnies and the bunny costume. See, that's, isn't that cool, ladies? Think about that, right? Here's this club. You're in Hollywood. Everyone that comes to Hollywood is thinking, what celebrity am I going to meet? Meaning, as an actor or a musician. No, they're coming to the club to see you, ladies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they want yeah. to find a bunny. Yeah. They, yeah. And we would take pictures with a lot of the celebrities. There were really, really strict rules about how guests women or men could interact with a bunny. You could not touch a bunny. And if you did, you were, right. you would lose your membership. Six day, out the door. Out, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Immediately. You didn't get a round two or a round three. You got one time. So if a bunny went to Pet Lacey, our bunny mother, and said, hey, you know, this guy touched my butt, he'd, he'd be escorted out right there. His membership would be removed. So that was never a thing. I was never touched inappropriately or, you know, oogled at or ogled at inappropriately. I was never uncomfortable physically. I, w- well, I always felt like... Is it fair to say that you felt safe at the clubs? I felt very safe. Very See, that's safe. Cool. I felt like what a was, queen. What was your biggest tip that you ever got as a 
working in the club. Maybe a 500 during the day. Wow. Ouch. That's a lot for back then. Yeah. I would assume. So many. <laughs> and it was just cocktails. I didn't even have to serve food to the, some, you know, businessman there with a couple of other guys and he was having a great time. And one thing that we would do as bunnies is if we had regulars, I say, you know, hey, you know, Bunny Karina, Bunny Sandy, my regulars here, come over and chat with them. And I bring bunnies. And if you had four bunnies at your table, you were in heaven. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. And we would perch. We were not allowed to sit. Yes, we, could, ask. we could yeah. perch. Well, what, what do you mean ex ex explain perch? You couldn't sit down. You were not allowed to sit. Yeah, you couldn't sit. You had to like lean. You could like, lean or lean. I could perch on the arm of your uh, chair which brought me physically close to you. And the, I could tell the guys were just peeping in their pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the closeness of the cleavage and oh, the booty yeah. okay. and the bunny tail. And all they could do was remain on their best behavior. It was wonderful. <laughs> what was your bunny suit color? Yeah. I think I started off with a pale blue. I ultimately had a, a red the coveted suit was the black suit, but yeah. you had to become a senior Still. bunny. You had to be there for two years and have no issues with Pat Lacey, meaning your hair was always <laughs> appropriate. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was the same for playmates then too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes, you know that. You're, you're little things that you would think, wow, nobody needs to be told this in their 20s. You know, your nails need to be clean and your hair needs to be good and your makeup needs to be done. and um, you need to be on time and you need to be pleasant and charming and kind. And then you would graduate and get your black bunny costume, which is such a coveted, sexy costume. I also had a cabaret costume. I did. I have uh, I kept my red suit. I kept my baby blue suit. I still have those. Oh, cool. You got to keep them. I thought you had to turn yeah, those things in. You did. Yeah, I didn't get to keep mine. You're, you're supposed, supposed to. to. Oh, oh shh. Nobody's oh. supposed to know. <laughs> Everyone listening. Shh. <laughs> I had a cabaret suit, which was more of a with garters, and I thought that was sexiest. I don't know if you guys remember the cabaret. It was, I, mm -hmm. yeah. No. We'll have to look that up. Yeah, you got to yeah. send us a picture. Do you have a picture? Sure. Not with me. Um, I'm sure I have photos. No, I mean, do you have a picture of so I'm you can sure. send it to us? I'm sure. Yeah, we're gonna have to put that up. That's cool. yeah. It, it was even more cleavage than the regular costume. Because it came down closer to your nipples and straight across. And then you had these garters holding up your stockings. Oh, it was too much. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was really good. Liz, we're not letting you go. Oh, gosh. You're sticking with what us. Have I gotten into There's it? so many questions that are <laughs> popping in my head right now. I'm sure you ladies, I'm looking at you like, a, I got a question. So let's hold it. We're going we're gonna to stop it right here. This is part one. Liz Stewart, you are listening to Rogue Bunnies Mayhem. And... The, the mayhem, mayhem continues. continues. I gotta write a book.